Welcome back to the Figure Drawing for Digital Comics course. My name is Kirk Nelson, and in this lesson, we begin Chapter 1, which is Illustration Hacks, Drawing the Easy Way. This is Lesson Number 2, which is titled Photo Sketching. In this lesson, we will take a look at how to use Photoshop to gather together different photographs and use those as a rough outline to sort of create the basic structure of the figure that we're going to draw. Now before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about the idea for this illustration hack, or this cheat as you may call it. This is essentially a way of gathering photos in Photoshop and sort of combining them together into a very rough composite and then taking that composite image and tracing over it to develop the illustration. Now it's true using reference photos is a time-honored tradition among illustrators and digital artists of all types. But this takes it a little bit further and clearly enters solidly into the area of cheating or hacking the illustration. Now this is a very fast process and it's really a good process to use to start to build up your skills but don't think you can depend on this entirely. If you really want to be an illustrator or learn how to draw figures you need to figure out how to be able to do it without using this as a crutch. But this technique is a valid technique to use either for developing your skills and your confidence when it comes to actually drawing figures, or if you already have some skills there but you're not too quick at it yet and you need to develop some illustrations quickly, this technique can be used in that sense too. And really the strength of this technique is that it is very flexible and that it can be used with any number of images. For instance, we are going to use this image here of this amazing costume of this female warrior. I really like this image. This looks like something that you would see in a digital comic book. But let's change it around a little bit. I don't really care much for the headpiece that she has on there and also the fact that her eyes are completely closed and the face she's making looks really a little bit bland. So ideally, I'd like to change out her face and her head and maybe even have a, a bunch of hair blowing out into the wind next door. So to do that, let's first draw this image here. Now these images are both available in the course files and they're freely distributed for you to use just for these educational purposes. The one of the warrior is my own personal image and I freely give you permission to use that. This one comes to us by stock free images and we thank the good folks there for allowing us to use their photos. So. I like the face that she's making. She looks very friendly, even though she doesn't look very warrior-like. It's a much more pleasant face to see. So let's just do a rough cutout of her head and neck area and edit to copy. Go back over to our warrior shot and edit paste. Now it's clearly going the wrong way and it's way too large. So let's edit, transform, flip horizontal. And we'll also hit the free transform on that as well so we can begin to move things around some. Now a lot of times when I'm positioning things like this, I like to lower the opacity. It just gives a better sense of where that's supposed to go in there. Now we have this large white square around her head that we need to get rid of, so we'll use the quick selection tool just to quickly grab that. And we want to mask that out, so because we selected the area we want to hide, we will hold down the Alt key as we click the mask button. And that also shows that we probably should adjust this a little bit more just to fit it in there a little bit better than how it is. What's really good about this technique is your compositing doesn't have to be even close to perfect. Because essentially what we're going to do is trace over these lines. So the parts that we don't like, like these hard edges here, we can completely ignore. Now if they really bother you, you can focus on that mask and use the paintbrush with black paint to just paint over those areas to hide them completely from your view. So now we've got a much more attractive facial features for our warrior here. Let's deal with some of the other things. For example, her hand here is just sort of hanging kind of limply down. I'd like to have a more active and engaging pose of that hand. Maybe like she's holding a, an energy ball or something like that. Something better than just a, a loose hand at her side. Now, this is really one of the strengths of this technique. If you think you may have some trouble drawing the open hand, sort of clasping empty air type of positioning, you don't have to struggle through that. 
because with this technique, you can easily take a photo of your own hand in that position and just place it in here. And that's actually what I've done. Look at this photo here. That's my own hand. And that's about the position that I wanted in. I just took this with my smartphone. I didn't even have to use my DSLR or a nice camera even. We just want the positioning of the hand so that we can trace the lines and get the proportions correct. So let's copy that. And go back to our project file here and paste that in. And position it how we want. And once again, let's select the area around the hand so that we can cut it out. So something sort of like that. Okay, so now we don't even need to worry about the fact that this hand looks like it's an entirely different color than the rest of her because we're not even concerned with that. But in this next step, we are going to add the more exaggerated proportions that we often see in digital comics and really comics of any sort. And to do that, let's cut the figure out from the background. Now again, we will just create a really quick selection of that background area. And at this point, we're not even going to worry about selecting the sword. That'll be later. Now, once I've got the quick selection mode completely surrounding her, I'm going to inverse that selection. That's select inverse or shift control I. That's shift command I on a Macintosh. And I'm just going to copy her to a new layer by control or command J. That's also through layer new layer via copy. All right, and so now with all three of these layers, I'm going to merge them into a single one by pressing Control E or Command E, and this merges into a single model. Okay, now from here, I'm going to exaggerate her proportions and sort of skew things out a little bit using the Puppet Warp tool found under Edit Puppet Warp. Now we've got all these grid lines attached to her, and I'm going to turn off the mesh and start adding some pins so that I can begin moving things around a little bit. I want our head to stay there, so I'm going to add a couple pins there just to keep those where they are. I'm going to kick her hips out more to the left. Reduce her already ridiculously small waist. And increase the bust line a little bit. Move her feet over just a little. Don't want them to bow though. So you want to put control points at the bottom of the feet and also at the knees just to help maintain structure of her legs as you start warping things around with the puppet warp. So now that we've got her fully in position, let's add in some long flowing hair. Now to do that, I am using a shot from Photolia, which unfortunately I cannot provide to you because they do not allow me to distribute the images. But you can always sign on to their site. That's fotolia.com, F-O-T-O-L-I-A. And this is file number 573-62745. You can always either purchase it if you want, or you can even download a comp version, because we really just need it so that we can see these flowing locks of hair. We're not actually going to use it in the final piece of artwork. We just need it for a reference. So I'm going to take this file over and drop it underneath our warrior. And it comes in way too large. So let's transform that down. And actually, we do need to flip it. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. And pull it down in size to give some long flowing locks to our warrior here. That looks good. It looks like she's got a lot of long, loose, flowing hair. We need to reduce some of these other pixels that are kind of distracting. So let's add a new layer in here, fill it with white through Edit Fill using the white content. And then that way we can take this hair layer and we can change it to multiply. And then we can also use a image adjustment levels. to lighten up that back considerably so that it blends in with that white area. Okay, so now all we have left is adding in that sword. And that was back on the background. Remember this? All right, so let's just use our quick selection tool and grab that sword area. 
Now there's this big blade guard here that I'm not worried about capturing, that has those claws on it. I'm thinking that in this pose her hair is going to cover up most of that, so I'm not too concerned about making sure we capture that. So I just have the hilt, a little bit of her hand, and the blade selected, and I'm going to copy that to its own layer, bring it up on top, and reveal everything else. So I can put this in using her fingers as that guide. I know this is looking rather rough, and that's intentional. This doesn't look like anything really that beautiful, but all it's doing is outlining some nice lines for us that then we can trace over to form the illustration. This will all make sense very soon, I promise you. And you will love this technique. This is a great technique. It makes it really easy to create some really fantastic drawings. You guys are going to love this. You just got to trust me. All right, guys, that concludes our lesson on photo sketching. I know things are looking a little weird right now, but really it's going to get a lot better. But before we can continue on with this illustration, we need to move on to lesson number three, which is an exploration of line weights. Now, I know that sounds a little bit technical, and it kind of is, but it's not that bad. You guys are actually going to like it. Be sure to check it out. I'll see you guys then.